So Tony Yoko beats Joe Tamway Jekko in an interesting, entertaining fight for me anyways. The fight turned out to be interesting. Um, I wasn't sure what to expect from Edin Jekko going into the fight because I'd never heard of him. I'd never seen him fight. But hearing he, he was a former cruiserweight and this was his second fight up at heavyweight. He performed decent, he performed decent Jekko, he's, he's, he's quite a big guy, I'm not sure how tall he is, he's what, I would guess he's about what, 6'6", six, 6'5", six, six, he seemed a decent build, he's not, it's not, he's, he's even bigger than Wilder at heavyweight, he looked bigger than Wilder, I, I'm not quite sure how much he weighed, or weighs, anyways, on to the fight, um, Jekko showed a lot of um, defensive, a very good defensive brain, he was very very defensively sound in that fight, Yoko was trying to take his head off throughout the whole fight, touching the body and then going up top to the head, but um, Jekko would just ride all his power punches, he was, he was very good at riding the shots, whenever Yoko caught him clean, um, Jekko managed to ride it and take the sting off the shot, so he never looked in any trouble at any point in that fight from you know punches just the pressure was what was really getting to him because Yoko just stayed in his face for the entirety of the fight. One thing that really sticks out though is Tony Yoko's lack of lack of pop per se. He he doesn't have any any considerable power in them hands. He was he was just throwing the kitchen sink at this guy for the most part. And, and this um, added to the, his previous fight against Christian Hammer where he was catching Hammer clean, cleaner than this guy. He didn't really catch Jekyll clean that many times. Christian Hammer was catching very clean. He could not put a dent in Hammer. Hammer just kept um, taunting him, sticking his tongue out and all sorts of silly stuff. But yeah, Yoko, Yoko he, he's a decent, well, we all know he's got decent skills, but that lack of pop, I'm not sure how that's really going to translate up at world level. I'm not sure if that's going to be a, be an issue for him. Because um, he see, he stopped most of his, most of his fights, he stopped them guys late. Like, if you remember the Dave Allen fight, you know, Dave Allen's someone that doesn't really get stopped often, but Yoko managed to stop him. Um, Alan speculates that's, that's down to you know extracurricular activities. As we all know, Yoko failed and um, not, not failed. He missed several you know tests. Um, the man is. Uh, I'm not a fan of Tony Yoko. Yeah, and you know that's a fight I would love there down the line. I'm not saying he won't punch me in again, but I'm sure I get a few more bats in myself this time. So it'd be it'd be nice. What do you make of him, like sort of slating Miller about the whole? I think scandal. Tony Yoko is. Um, He's, um, I think he's, a, I think he's a really bad swear word that I'm not going to say. It's got four letters in. It begins with a C, and it ends in a, in a U and N in a T. I don't like him. I know that fight does not sit right with me at all. The Ortiz fight, but the Yoka fight really gets fucking blood boiling. But, uh, but yeah, I hope right. Tony's very well. Whatever he's doing, but he just sounds like a fucking idiot when he says things like that about. Um, Jerome Miller, but yeah, we move on. So yeah, um, Allen's always attributed that loss, that um, final 12 round flurry, Yoko managed to put on him. He, he think that was, you know, based off extracurriculars. Not 12 round, 10, 10th round flurry, that, that was a 10 round, 10 rounder. Anyways, yeah, um, back to this fight, Yoko could not really hurt this Jekyll guy. This, Jekyll guy, he's gonna be a decent, um, decent test for up and for uh, up and coming prospects because he showed very, very good um, defensive skills in there. I was actually shocked at how how well he was performing defensively because he didn't really offer much um, offensively. He was just sticking his jab, sticking his jab out. That's the most he did. I can't remember him throwing too many right hands or hooks and stuff, things of that nature. Probably for about maybe mm, ten right hands at the most the whole fight. He was just he just he was stuck with the jab for the most part. And he, Yoko just basically beat him up. It was quite clear what um, Jekyll's tactics were because even early on in the fight, I was noticing when he gets to the as soon as Jekyll hears the ten seconds clap for the round before the round ends, he he just tries to throw a flurry at Yoko and 
to try and nick the round but most of the time the the the, the, the random punches he tries to throw they don't even they don't land so he was he was pretty pretty pointless but you could clearly see that that was a tactic of trying to implore that didn't actually work and and to think some of um, towards the mid stage of the fight you could actually hear Jekyll's trainer tell him to do exactly that as soon as he heard the 10 second clap throw a bunch of punches at Yoko and see what happens let's go the whole Belgian's watching you my friend let's go yeah. need to put your the job your job is faster yeah but relax this guy's slow relax take your time go around it just get fucked huh yeah keep grabbing yeah keep grabbing keep grabbing and then when you hear when you hear them when you hear them it never really worked out to be fair it never worked out but yeah that's something they were trying so yeah Jekyll survives to the 12th round in about I think 30 seconds or so towards the or maybe even a minute towards the end of the fight Yoko was trying as much as he was throughout the whole fight but he put up he tried a lot harder this time <laughs> he, he, he put all his energy into it he's throwing crazy floor is trying to take this guy out and um, Jekyll was still doing this he even up until the end of the fight Jekyll still had his his, um, his wits about him he was still trying to ride and duck and bob and weave and yet um, Yoko was trying to take him out he started catching him a few times caught him a couple of times going with a nice little uppercut Jekyll was still trying to ride and then Yoko landed a random jab right in the kisser and Jekyll just didn't want to know afterwards. He turned his back. This was it was backed up. Most of the fight, yo, um, Jekyll kept on going on the ropes. The, the, this time it was backed up on his own corner. And then as soon as Yoko landed that jab, he turned around and looked at his corner. He was just shaking Jekyll was just shaking his head like nah, he don't want any more, he don't want any more. Yoko just smiled and yeah, laughed and left pretty much. He was happy to get a stoppage because that looked like it was going to, that looked like it was going a distance. I'm quite sad for Jekyll really, I kind of wanted him to, to see the final belt, but yeah, it wasn't it wasn't meant to be, he quit and yeah, that was the end of the fight, decent scrap, decent little scrap. Up at world level though, yoko has got great engine, a lack of pop, uh, very, very good boxing skills, he can, he can go late, he can... Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna be fun to watch, but that lack of pop is gonna be a problem, I think, because you you have to get people's respect in the, in the heavyweight division. If you remember the Hammer fight, not to bang on about it, but if you remember the Hammer fight, you, you didn't get Hammer's respect whatsoever. He just kept on hitting Hammer, and Hammer was just laughing at him, you know. So yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure how that's gonna how that's gonna translate up. Uh, you know, the elite, the elite level. Cause... Joe, the juggernaut, oh. Joyce! He called out Joe Joyce at the end of the fight and can't remember who else he called that but the, he's had a rivalry with Joe Joyce going back to the amateur days and that would be a very interesting fight because both men got very very good engines so I'm not sure I'll give the the edge and the pop to Joe Joyce so Joe Joyce probably have a bit more power than Yoko and the boxing skills Yo, yeah it's a toss up they both <laughs> they both arguably olympic um, gold medalists yoko got the decision but you know m most people including me felt like joyce won but yeah it would be interesting to see the fight between them and the pros but yeah joyce is more further on in, with his career now he's on the verge of a world title shot so this will probably be you know further down the line not anytime soon probably after joyce um you know well, if he beats Usyk, it's probably not going to happen. If he loses to Usyk, it's yeah more than likely going to happen within the next within the next year, you know. So yeah, that's one I'm going to be looking forward to. Choice Yoko. Anyways, wrapping this one up here. Been a little swamped lately, hence the lack of regular uploads. Well, you know, all week it ain't really been about, but yeah, things are getting back to normal now, so you hear from me more regular as usual you know 
comments down in the comment section below like subscribe do your thing with the notification bell i'm out